Most would say I was quite the happy kid growing up. I grew up in a healthy home. My parents taught me about Jesus and always supported me with my goals. When I was about 12 or 13, my health seemed to decline with unknown reasons. I didn't realize it at the time, but at such a young age was when the enemy's lies began to creep in. The lies I believed for years. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called ITP. ITP causes my body to not clot or heal properly. Due to its unknown nature to both me and my family, I had to sit on on many normal activities for kids. It was a scary time in our lives. Also around that time, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, which has its own complications. And when I was very young, I was told by multiple doctors I would not be able to have kids due to another condition I was born with. And the reality of that didn't sink in until I was diagnosed with these other health concerns in my early teen years. I quickly sank into a place where I began to feel different and like I didn't belong. I just wanted to feel normal. I quietly began to believe I wasn't worth loving because of my conditions that I would never find someone who thought I was worthwhile. I knew I didn't deserve to be mistreated and had parents who always said I was worth every penny and friends who cared. But despite that, deep down the lies won. And I genuinely thought I was of less value than everyone else. I knew God loved me, but I couldn't help but feel there must have been something I was doing or not doing to get better. I struggled to know who I was and to see God's purpose and where he wanted me to be or use me in my life. I slowly twisted the Bible into what was comfortable and what made sense to me. As long as I wasn't harming others, I decided that I'd let myself do what I want in the waiting. This mindset made it even harder to find truth in, this, in the midst of my confusion. To the world, I was looking good and not doing anything wrong. I was doing what I loved for work as a nurse. I was able to travel even by my own house. Though those seemed like great things and nothing wrong with those achievements, God allowed me to see how far I was slipping away in the midst of it. I was beginning to see how being good around them wasn't enough. God reached out in a tangible way when I was very simply asked by a friend, do you think this is the direction God has for you? I didn't even have to process the question. My answer was clearly and immediately no. But God, in His grace, provided me with believers to help me see and walk in truth. And my journey of sanctification began when I was learning who I was in Him. It was and is a refreshing but ripping season in my life. Clinging to the heart of Romans 8.15, the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again, Rather, spirit you received brought you about your adoption to sonship. The more I left my old desires behind and stopped twisting the gospel to my own liking, the more life I began to see and experience. I began to see my purpose and identity as not these things society tells us is beneficial and the things that I can accomplish. Our purpose is our undivided devotion to Christ. It is about Him, which has nothing to do with health, status, marriage, or whatever the world sees as successful. As I began to see how to live out the gospel, my grief lifted. Even though I'm not married, even though I do not have what others may have, my grief still lifted, thanks to Jesus Christ. I began to stop wondering what God's plan was for me, and just began to serve Him. God has guided me with my, with my health. I have no longer ITP concerns, decreased my thyroid medication, and my energy was, has never been better. Though I praise God for this, I thought my testimony would end here by seeing how God has intervened with my physical healing. But what is more glorifying is He is above it all regardless of my outcome. Colossians 1.22 says he has now reconciled you in his body of, of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. I have come to realize my purpose and worth is who I am through Jesus' blood, his daughter made clean. Because of this, I now rest and serve in his kingdom under his wings. Regardless of any circumstances, he is my protector 
He is my provider. I serve a God who is sovereign above everything and anything. This is who I belong to, and this is why I want to obey him by being baptized. Well, this is an exciting moment. There might not be crowds here, but there are definitely crowds in the heavens that are celebrating with you, Hannah. And we are, we are excited to be with you. I know you're cold, so we'll get this going. Uh, Hannah, is it your confession of faith, your profession of faith to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Is he your Lord and Savior? If it is, say yes. Yes. Awesome. And when we put, when we, uh, put Hannah down and bring her back up, we're all going to celebrate with great joy, raise a joyful noise for her, right? And so, Hannah, it is my uh, privilege and, and it is my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father. Hold my hand. There you go. Yeah, that's right. In the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> yeah! Awesome. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> this is so good to be here. Congratulations. I'm so glad you came and did this. This is exciting. Yeah! <laughs> 